Hey guys, you read that title correctly. It's not false, it's not nonsense, it's not clickbait. That's what's up, it's legit. Okay, so just to rip the band-aid off, as of September 15th, this channel, Sassy Scorpion Tarot, is going to go part-time or partial retirement, however you want to put it. Let's talk about it. Gosh, like I said in the last Sunday check-in, I'm nervous. I'm this, I'm this little guy right here. I'm nervous to share this with you, but point number one, the main point, the point, I'm happy. I'm very, I'm very happy <laughs> because, you know, um, with this channel going to part-time, it effectively marks a milestone and a long-standing career goal of mine. So let's talk about that. Um, I have successfully re-entered the world full-time as a freelance writer, an occupation that I am familiar with, okay? And it's now full-time and full-time on my terms. It's contracts, articles, writing jobs that I get to pick and choose, and I get to kind of load my schedule as much as I want or keep it as light as I want. It, frankly, it's, it's the dream. It's the dream for um, people who wish to work in writing and particularly work on their own terms, you know? And that's, that's where I'm at. So I get to pick and choose my own assignments at my own pace. Oh, goodness. I'm just nervous. It's the nerves. It's the nerves. It's, it's, I'm, I'm very much a private person in real life, and I typically don't inform people of things that they don't need to know, you know, so that's, that's where all this is coming from. But um, some of you have been with me from the very beginning, and you are, in fact, familiar with my writing background. In fact, many of you old school Sassians, you remember my writer's blog, um, you read some of my articles, and some of you, bless you, you know, you bought copies of um, some of my published works and short stories and poems, and thank you so much to my original OG crew, you know, you guys were here from the very, very beginning, and you offered so much support across, at that time, from the very beginning, about four years ago, four and a half years ago. I was across multiple platforms doing many things, not just YouTube, and you remember that, and just thank you all so much. So for those folks who are not familiar with that, let me back up and give you kind of a brief summary of my background so you can kind of understand why I'm partially parting ways with YouTube and why I'm cool with it, and um, it's in fact a good thing, yeah? So let's do a little bit of a history. So I suppose my relationship writing is rather like what you might call a first love or the first love experience, okay? And like most first loves, they teach you a lot. They teach you, oh my God, they teach you so much, but you also realize how very impractical they are. <laughs> and, um, you know, that first love and yourself, very rarely can you meet in the same place at the same time in terms of development further out. So they teach you a lot. And they make you have all the big feelings and they make you have all the big hopes and dreams. But so too do they come with a lot of realities uh, <laughs> in that respect of what are you going to do with your life? Like say, for instance, that I was a kid, I was that I'm going to be a writer, you know. And I maintain that, that truth. Um, elementary school, middle school, high school, and then when college, reality hit home. And I understood the limitations for someone who came from my background. Just to let you know, I don't want to go too much into the personals of it, but I did not come from a privileged background. Uh, we were very poor, okay? We were what you would call under the poverty line, uh, but I was smart. Uh, I was very smart, so while my family, bless them, did not have the resources, my brains kind of made up for that. I was able to find grants and scholarships uh, that I could apply to, and that actually paid for the first several years of college. But to be clear, between my bachelor's, my master's, and everything else, it took about eight years. It typically doesn't take that long, but I had to work a lot. So I put myself through school the old-fashioned way, and I was doing about 60 hours a week. Uh, between going to class, work, class, work, that was my life. I was in that situation where I had to very much sacrifice short-term anything for a long-term view. So I didn't have much of a social life. I had sacrificed a lot of friendships and, and relationships to be where I was. But I was interested in my own sense of security and advancement and, frankly, doing well for myself. You know, I never saw people or human beings as a means to an end for my own security, i.e. prosperous friendships or relationships to carry me through, no, I look to myself. So when I tell you I've always been that person to appreciate a long-term view, that's what that is. I very rarely do anything lightly. It's not easy for me, I admit, to be spontaneous, but 
I will say this. I know how to carry out a goal. <laughs> and like a lot of first loves, uh, writing and I parted ways around college time <laughs> when it was time to get serious. Not that I mean to discourage anyone from educating themselves in writing. Absolutely not. It's just where from my terms, conditions and my own kind of background, I had to start making practical choices. So, But I will say this about those first loves, or even if it's not a first love, let's say it's just a really strong connection, one that's completely different than you've ever known. Perhaps one day, when the timing's right, if it ever is, you're in a more prepared state to meet it again. It takes on another form of readiness that wasn't available the first time you connected with it, you know? And that's what writing is to me, and that's where I am today. And that's why I'm thrilled to be here announcing this to you. As I got into college, like I said, I had to start making practical decisions right away. I chose instead something that would interest me, but would carry me long term into the future via career. I received my bachelor's in psychology and then my master's in counseling. And then, of course, all the dedicated licensures and certifications you need to back those up. And that was my profession as well as my education for almost a decade after graduation. And like I said, it was something that always intrigued me as human behavior, um, that kind of thing. And tarot absolutely fed into that. By the way, I mean, I have been practicing tarot since then. Honestly, couldn't give you a date. I want to say I started um, flirting, I suppose, if you will, with tarot <laughs> in my teen years when I was very much looking for something beyond the realm of religion and more so in the area of spirituality, something that I feel I could connect to and that it might help me find my way. And that's exactly what tarot did. And that's why a lot of people gravitate towards the spiritual arts, not necessarily religion, because we have that feeling that there's something more and we can't quite put our finger on it. It's a tool to kind of answer some of those questions. And I kind of saw over the years how the kind of spiritual practices and psychological references, they could intertwine. So that was helpful. So it always, it was with me from the very beginning. But yes, I made my profession uh, in counseling for, like I said, almost 10 years. I was a dual specialist. So that means someone who chose two particular training fields as their specialty. Uh, mine were anxiety issues and then also career because I absolutely saw those as being 100% related. My clients that I worked with for years. It left an impression on me. I got their stories. I got to work with them. And if you've ever worked in that field, any sort of field where you get to help others, you understand right away how humbling it is, right? They're choosing you to help influence their life. And that's always been an imperative need for me is to understand people. And I can see where writing and tarot and psychology, all these things played into each other. They really did. But yeah, that was my profession for some time. And then up until the point where I gave birth to my daughter, my priorities changed quite a bit. I started to look at ways where I could continue to exercise my professional skills and stay more at home. And then that's where I got back to writing. And I found inroads here and there, freelance work, freelance articles and stuff like that. And um, I quit. I hung up my counselor's shingle, as we like to say. And that was one of the weirdest things I ever had to do. Going from all that discipline and all that work to completely unregulated territory about having to be open and flexible. That was not my world. <laughs> but that's exactly what I was craving because I wanted to give my, my daughter that quality of care that perhaps I was missing in my own childhood, that kind of thing, because you grew up with a working mentality. So there wasn't much room for a childhood and I wanted her to have that. I found a compromise between being a stay-at-home mom but still working. And that changed a lot. It changed everything. It got me closer to that dream, that, that far away hazy dream that was called publishing, which I never really thought could happen until I put more into it. And what do we talk about investments, guys? You start dropping those pages, your reality starts to take shape. So I put a little bit more investment into this new terrain, this completely new terrain for me. And I started to get more back from it. I ran a successful writer's blog. I was getting freelance work at my choice, at my choosing. It was wild. It was absolutely wild. But I hadn't, I don't know. I was still looking for something. By the time I entered YouTube, it was a particularly difficult period in my life, personally, not so much professionally, but personally. Somehow I made my way back to my old stomping grounds and uh, got a part-time managerial gig at a bookstore. Loved it. <laughs> and I can't stand to be idle. It's one of those things, guys. I, I can't stand to be idle. So my daughter was older. I was writing. I went back to work at a place that I had missed terribly at my old alma mater, work around books, work around people, love it. And I was still trying to sort something out. I was still trying to figure something out and I couldn't figure out what it was. I just knew I had been in a transformative state and that took a while, it took a year or more, but I got there. You wanna know how? 
On a particularly slow day, I was finishing out an article. Uh, nobody was in the store, nothing. I had some YouTube thing going up in the background because I listen while I work. I just, I'm, again, I'm that person. I do multiple things at one time. And then you will never believe what popped up in my feed. A video. Guess what type? It was a terror video. I don't remember who. And I said, what? <laughs> what am I even saying right now? This is on YouTube? Like for me now, don't get me wrong, I had at this point been doing years of private readings for people. So yes, I'm aware of terror practices very much so, but I had never seen it online before. I went down the rabbit hole pretty quickly after that. <laughs> so I just, I went down the, and there was no going back after that. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. People are practicing this craft online, but it was so different. It was odd because again, I had been doing private readings for years and I've been working with clients for years under a counseling role, it's completely different under a collective point of view. And I saw how tarot readers really had to shift from a singular mindset, if they had ever practiced private readings at all, I have no idea, to full-on collective and thinking in terms of a we group and presenting the energies in a we group as opposed to a singular individual. So again, my, my point of view is very different from people who've only ever known collective readings, right? It's completely different, but I saw how you could shift it and shift it and shift it, and it was really cool. And then I saw stuff that was horrible. Horrible. I saw stuff that was absolutely horrid. I was like, I can't believe these people are saying this. And I know what it is now to generate views, shocking the audience. I was equally inspired and I was equally mortified. And I, I, I was so championing of those folks who were doing such a great job and they kept it clean and they kept it real and other folks who were like, oh my God. So I said, well, why don't I do this? And I take it to the in-depth way like I would if I was working with a client. And that was my point of view. So hence, Sassy Scorpion Terror was born. And it's fledgling time. Uh, I was nervous and I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't know anything about technology, sound and software. And in many respects, I still don't. Although I've made a lot of advancements. Okay, let's not get lost to that. But um, yeah, and I loosened up allowed more of my personality out. I feel like I had started to find a little bit of that missing piece, whatever it is I was looking for. I gave in notice to my job as a part-time manager. I left. And just as that particular door was closing, another one I thought was opening back to the publishing goals. There was talks. I got in talks about a book deal. They were just so initial. They were just taking those baby steps, those first tentative uh, baby steps. And by then I had already been published a couple of times with short stories and poems and things like that. And I had my articles too. Uh, but this was a book deal, and it was so tentative, like I said, and it was going to be a book of poems. It's interesting, the approach that it was pitched to me. They were familiar with my body of work that I had published online, and I had really two types of poems. Love poems, reflection poems, hindsight poems, love and tragedy, that kind of thing, and then also erotic poems. Hi. If you're new to the channel, my name's Christina. I'm a little different and happy to be so. I have always been a little different and happy to be so. Yes, yes, I actively published erotica, erotic poems, yes. And that's what caught their attention. The idea was to make a book of poems that reflected kind of love poems and then erotic poems to kind of show what I show you guys with intimate tarot, how you can have love, but not necessarily intimacy, and you can have intimacy, but not necessarily love, but when they overlap and they create that beautiful Venn diagram of experience, it's beautiful. They wanted to show that, and the more I heard it, I was like, that's, a, a, yes, absolutely, this is brilliant. Hey. <laughs> It was great. So it was great. It was to show duality and, and love and, and intimacy and how inti excuse me, intimacy takes several forms from love to sexuality and all that. I was all for it. And then what happened, guys? What happened? The vid. COVID. It messed up a lot of people's lives, as we know. Can you imagine what it's like to be that close to your dream? Offer. It's getting talked out, negotiated, contracted. You're this close to the dream. That's how close I was. That's how close a lot of people were. It killed the deal in any talks of it. It was a very, very small publishing house. In fact, it was even smaller than the one I had been working with prior to that had published my short stories. They folded. Um, bless them. That particular door closed. But here's what opened. Like I said, I had already started the YouTube channel and it took off. It took off. So any thoughts I had of writing, freelance too, article writing, stop. It all stopped. Uh, YouTube had kind of taken over my life at that point. 
they could have completely taken over. Um, yeah, those were the height of the days. I remember one month I got 16,000 new subscribers in a month, less than a month, and I was literally going like this. Oh, dear. I didn't have time for writing or freelance, never mind trying to get back to that. It really took over my life, but um, that was a, a space that I needed to fill. I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know that that's what I was looking for, but that's what I was looking for. Okay, so it happened at just the right time and in the right way. With YouTube taking off, I had created a successful platform that was now pretty much paying full time, past the point of needs and into the space of doing quite well, for which I'm very grateful to YouTube for that. Shortly thereafter, from the channel having its multiple growth spurts, if you will, my private readings took off. But I had been practicing private readings for a long time, for a long time with individuals. And um, thanks to the channel having its growth spurt, people caught on to them so much so that first year, year and a half, I practiced private readings alongside creating messages for YouTube. I would sell out in about five minutes after opening the schedule to the public. By that, I mean a month worth of private readings would sell out in five minutes. I got to the point where I could not operate both successfully because they had both become essentially full-time, full-time messages for YouTube and then full-time private reading work. They were both at my disposal. I essentially needed to pick one. I didn't need the income of both, to be perfectly honest with you. The whole point of trying to live a more flexible life, one where I can really exercise skills and be of use to people while still maintaining my own kind of life, okay, <laughs> had gone out the window. And it defeated the purpose, so I decided to drop private readings and um, became a full-time content creator. There you go. Uh, but yeah, I I've, I've really have done the best I've, I can. And here we are four and a half years later. Realistically, I got beef with YouTube. There are people who have created whole videos around this subject. You might have noticed how many YouTubers have quit this past eight months to a year. There's a very marked point on the timeline when that started to happen, and it will continue to be the case. I'm not the last person to go part-time or partial retirement. There are the people who have taken it a full step further and have retired altogether. And like I said, there's reasons why. And uh, if you'd like a more comprehensive scope about what the heck's going on, I will list those messages or videos, I should say, down below. But yeah, I mean, just to simply put with my own experience, how YouTube initially, how I entered it and how a lot of people did was merit-based subscriber. Okay, count, status circulation. And by that I mean you start your channel, you put messages, content out there consistently, you gain subscribers if people like your work, and here was the deal with YouTube. This was always the deal with YouTube. This was YouTube's number one deal. So long as you have subscribers and you release content, we will show your work in their feed. Guess what doesn't happen anymore? Effectively making the subscriber or bell button useless. It moved away from merit-based circulation. It's now about trending. Shorter, the better. The faster, the better. The shinier, the brighter, the sillier, uh, the more disturbing it is, the better. Okay, it's not really about quality content so much as can we retain people's attention. The answer is no. So that's why they advocate shorter anything. <laughs> um, there are some people who still successfully do long-form content. The point is, it is moved away from merit-based circulation. The, ma the vast majority of comments and emails I get these days are, where are you? I never see your work anymore. I thought you gave up months ago. Unless my message was the last thing you watched, you're not going to see it in your feed for a while. Or you go out of your way to remember to go see your message for the day. Uh, it's not fair. It is a definition of not fair. As far as I'm concerned, YouTube broke the contract with content creators. I saw the writing on the wall six months ago. And we've had talks about what happens when you see writing on the wall, especially when it's written in neon and you can't miss it. You can either avoid it, which will lead to disastrous effects, or you can do something about it. And I'm always going to be that person who will opt to do something about it. And YouTube's solution was simple. Oh, just do more. Just do more. Make it lighter, make it faster, make it jazzier. It basically work for free. One of the first things you learn when you grow up in poverty or close to it, just around it, <laughs> above the poverty line, below it, is that you do not work for free. I grew up like eight mile. That's not an exaggeration. Literally a trailer park that was across the train tracks. My father was a single father who worked his ass off to provide for his kids. Ladies and gentlemen, them and they, I don't work for free. So YouTube solution isn't a solution. That aside, I'm still grateful. I'm grateful that that writing on the wall appeared. It told me it was time. Speaking of my work, 
where does that leave us in terms of part-time? Simple. We're going to, from September 15th and onward, do two check-ins by the week. A Thursday check-in, including a Sunday check-in. I like that because given my new schedule that I get to create for freelance writing, I can get flexible with it. So if I'm able to add a third check-in for the week, I will. If I'm able to drop a a sassy short or a sassy extra, I will. That part-time schedule, at least for now, a Thursday check-in and a Sunday check-in. And we can get playful with those two. A little more relaxed, a little bit more flexible. And if I'm able to add more content for the week, then I will. And all this to be said, me getting back into the world of writing, reducing this channel to part-time, I will be able to go back into the pursuit of long-term publishing. Okay, which is still, I must admit, a star of mine. However, I have um, set aside that idea of the book of poems and let that be in the past. I'm working on a whole new body of material, being in this position, freelance writing, partial YouTube work, will allow me to put some really good focus into that bigger publishing goal. There are a couple of points I should clarify. All my freelance work articles, this kind of thing, will be written under a pseudonym for all current employers and future contracts as well, including the rights and ownership to that name. I will not be sharing who I write for. The idea is that I'm emphasizing peace in this part of my career. Uh, To put not too fine a point on it, stalking remains an issue to this day. I don't like giving it too much attention because it tends to perpetuate the issue even further. Stalkers love to know that they make an impact, so I don't like to talk about it too much. It has negatively impacted my life and my family's life for several years. Sometimes it's manageable, other times it isn't. It has gotten pretty serious, at least in the past. So when I tell you I am emphasizing peace, you'll have to forgive me that I'm not sharing that pseudonym with you or my future employers. You don't need to know, and I'm sorry. I would love for my, well, my well-meaning audience to share my work with me. But on that piece, I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put my foot down. And my future employers understand, uh, fully disclosed what I do here. They understand, and they're actually very supportive, and that's what it is to work in the publishing world. You get your work exposed. But the point is, is that they get to act as an interim between me, my work, and other people <laughs> who have poor intent. So I'm, I'm happy to know that my, my current soon-to-be future employers, they, um, they get that they get it and they understand why I want a pseudonym. So that's good. I appreciate that they appreciate that. They're highly empathetic, but that's, that's where that stands. So I wish I could share that with you, but also, no, I don't. I just want to write in peace. There's your healthy audience and then there's an unhealthy audience and they're not the majority, but they, they show up inevitably. Okay. It's, it's inevitable. Just to let you know, if you're thinking about a career in social media full-time, there's going to be folks out there who love to hate you and they want you to know it and go out of their way to make sure that you know it. And they are prepared to overstep lines, ethically, morally, legally. And there's people who insist that they are in love with you and they will wreak the same sort of harm and havoc. You would not believe how time consuming these people are in reality. And that's what they love to do. They're not in your world, so they have to find ways to create drama, to be in your life. So it's time consuming. Whether you're dealing with somebody and their behavior legally or otherwise, they're time consuming. And you don't need to know about that. You wouldn't want to know that. You're here for tarot, not for my stalker updates. All right. Although I grant you, I could make a series out of it, but that's not why I'm here. Some of those things though have kept me up at night and my family up at night. So, and they've for the most part have been resolved. So when I tell you I want some peace in this part of my journey, yeah. So you have to forgive me for not sharing that with you. All right. You just have to take my word for it. However, if I manage in time, my dream goal of large-scale publication such as a book, you better bet your butt. (laughs) I will be fully using that under my given name, and then I will announce it to you all so long as the channel is open. You know, I would love to share that news with you, but that's going to take some time. I'm working through it. Who knows, maybe one day. Going hand in hand in that, uh, effective immediately, there will be no more sassy mail. Okay, I am shutting down my business address box uh, for the same or similar reasons. I'm trying to discourage stalker behavior. So thank you for everybody who has sent me in appropriately addressed letters and notes and postcards and gifts. Thank you all so much for the gifts for me, my daughter, Cinnamon, and for those of you who remember Pip, my guinea pig. You used to give him little things and treats too. Thank you all so much um, for the positivity when you send what you send. 
with real appreciation for me as a person and how I've helped you. And if I could, sorry. Yeah, I mean, if I could show you the, the stack, I keep everything. I keep everything. So, of course, I do. I'm sentimental. I know it can be quite the hard ass, but that's that's the environment. That's the upbringing. But inside, I'm a big squishy squish. But uh, I, if I could show you the stack of, of letters and postcards and your, your thoughts and these past four and a half years, oh my gosh, you guys, there wouldn't be enough space here. And the artwork, you so many talented folks out there. If I could show you two those things, if they cared, <laughs> my circulation would be a lot different. Don't get me wrong, it might be open for the next couple of days, but please, uh, no more letters, postcards, or gifts. Thank you all so much. I know you understand. Anything else? Anything? Yes, of course, there are a couple more points. Um, for now, my Assassin Scorpion email will remain open so long as the channel remains open. So long as the channel remains open and active, I will have an active email associated with the channel. You bet. You'll have to forgive me if it takes a moment to reply to you. It's going to take a couple moments, but I'll get there. I promise you I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yes, the Sassy Scorpion email will remain open so long as the channel is, and the same for the merch store. P.S. We're going to do a 10% off all merch. Use code name Sassy Love. Yeah, that 10% off code will be good for the next week. Oh. There you go. Get yourself some Sassy merch. But yeah, that will continue to remain open as well. And in the interest of transparency, all right, just to let you know the check ins. And that part-time schedule beginning September 15th. Now you can expect mid-roll ads. I know. I'm not a fan of mid-roll ads. I've made my opinion on this very clear over the years. But I am going to need to increase my form of compensation now that we're going to part-time. I have absolutely no say. And this is true right now. When it's uh, pre-roll and post-roll. I have no choice in selection. Some of those ads are your standard 20, 30 seconds. Others, for some reason, are minutes long. I have no say in that. And I know a lot of you are used to mid-roll ads and you don't you don't understand what the issue is. It, technically, there isn't. You, as a content creator, have every right to be compensated as you see fit when it comes to ads. YouTube has taken away almost all uh, options now, except that one. And of course, mid-roll is the most annoying. <laughs> it is the most annoying. Uh, but now that I'm going to part time, it makes sense to actually activate it because like I said, um, I'm going to need some form of compensation now that my circulation is going to drop even further. It's a big deal to me because I've always been anti mid roll. I mean, I don't care for it, but this is different. Okay. It's not full time messages anymore. You know, and other content creators are mortified by what I'm saying. You mean you haven't been running mid roll this whole time, 13 messages a week. You're not maximizing your ad. No, I don't because that's not how I think. Don't get me wrong. I don't work for free. I've never complained about the compensation I've been given. Okay. Not once, but there's a big difference between not working for free and gutting people. Now that it's part time, it wouldn't be, it would be some sort of appropriate compensation. I really want to emphasize here, guys, I am not reducing content because I'm angry with YouTube. I, it has nothing to do with that or the lack of channel progress. Um, the booming days for me are over and I've come to terms with that. The big growth days for me, they're over. I've come to terms with that. It's there has nothing to do with that. I need to be needed. And if my work doesn't serve a purpose, it's time for me to go. But it's more than what I'm leaving behind, as we talk about with the Six of Swords, it's also what I have to look forward to. And there's so much to look forward to. If I could shake YouTube's hand and say thank you. Thank you for reminding me where I needed to be. I would. Because you remind me every day that I'm not appreciated. Despite the fact I put up consistently 13 messages a week. I keep ads low for my audience. But apparently I do all the wrong things. And so when your partner tells you, you're doing great, but you're also doing all the wrong things. That's mixed signals, honey. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't do mixed signals, but it reminded me where I got a clear yes. I get a clear yes in writing. We're all tasked with understanding, you know, we're all tasked with understanding what's right for us, what's wrong for us, and the difference between those things. And that's where I am today. It's my time. It's your time. It's everybody's time. Make it your time. I think a lot of folks, almost everyone knows what it's like where you might be in a situation at work or in a relationship where you're fighting for something or someone who cannot or will not do the same for you. And that's a hard day. But in that silver lining, it's also a freeing day. You free yourself from that. And I talk about this kind of thing all the time, guys. We talk about beginnings, 
endings, transformative concepts. It sucks, but it's in our best interest. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm experiencing with this. And if you are familiar with my work, you get this. You understand what I'm saying. And you're saying, go, Christina, go. Do what you need to do, as I often tell you. That's what you would tell me now, right? And as soon as I made the decision, by the way, to reduce the channel, all these doors started to open up, not randomly, not by chance, but because I started putting myself in that direction. Then I saw how accessible it was and probably had been for some time. That's how I know. It's confirmation for me. All I received since making the decision was confirmation. I have spent a lifetime cultivating my foundation. A lifetime, guys. We're talking education, career, contacts, who I know, why I know them, the friendships I've cultivated, the alliances I've cultivated. To be honest with you, frankly, YouTube should have put more into keeping consistent content creators like me. Because we show up, we show up on time. Instead, they chose to nurture and foster an environment that says trend-based content. Fast, easily digestible, fun, humorous, exaggerative, explosive, or frankly just horrible but whatever sells, right? Uh, once more, I'm not mad, I'm not angry, I'm not bitter. I went through all those emotions already. So why am I not doing away with the channel altogether? Why part-time? Why partial retirement, Christina? You guys, that's why. You guys, the ones who know to look for my work when it doesn't show up in your feed. You guys who leave comments. You guys who tell me how my work still affects you to this day. How my work has guided you. That's why I'm not completely leaving the channel behind. I could do, but I don't want to. I'll show up for you. I'm not showing up for YouTube. I show up for you. That's why. That's why we're going to do a couple of check-ins in the week now and maybe some extra add-ons here and there. I know, Taro, I could do private readings full-time again if I wanted to. I choose not to. I'm in that space in my life where, because of my strong foundation, I can make those choices that are appropriate for me now. I no longer have that mindset like I did in my youth that I have to do something practical and it'll be a safety net. And I don't have to do any of that anymore. I worked very hard to be where I am today, literally. That's why I haven't completely done away with the channel. All right? Because of you. Thursday check-in, Sunday check-in, and maybe little added bits here and there. Extra sassy and sassy shorts and all that jazz. And even the dear sassy. Oh, I haven't left that alone. No, no, no. That's still in my mind. It's just been a heck of a past six months. <laughs> it's just, excuse me, but it's been a heck of a past six, nine months. <laughs> now, the interactive part that I kind of talked about briefly in the last Sunday check-in where I want you guys' response. There is still a question of what to do with my last week of in-depth readings. Yes, September 9th through the 14th, Monday to Saturday, as you know, what should I do? And that's up to you. I want your direct feedback in the comments about what last in-depth reading you would like to see from me before we completely move over to a check-in system. Okay, so once more, this is our last round. We are talking about our last round of in-depth readings, September 9th through the 14th. And Christina, what does that include? Everything you've been saying, Donning, for these past four and a half years. So let me give you the choices. That's going to be Celtic Cross, okay? A monthly overview, so that would be for the month of October. We could do a three-month review, <clears throat> which would be October, November, December. We can do an intimate tarot, and we can do a yours and theirs. Okay, so once more, Celtic Cross, monthly overview, the focus being October. A three-month review, October, November, December. Okay, uh, intimate tarot, I know, and yours and theirs. Which one would you like to see if you're in-depth? Uh, let me know. Bye let's say Tuesday morning. So this comes out Sunday. You have all Monday. I'll be calculating up until the last minute. And then I'm going to sit down to read. Okay. And this is where we get to that real talk segment. I know it seems like we've had a lot of real talk up until this point, but here's some more real talk. If this is where we part ways, I understand. I always, always advocate choice. If uh, you cannot reasonably see subscribing to me anymore, it's okay. I get it. And I respect your choice. I know I hope you respect mine and you understand what I'm trying to do and that you're happy for me, you know? If, however, you occasionally want to check in. Should you need us? Yes. Should you need us? I will have some check-ins for you beginning September 15th for a Sunday check-in and a Thursday check-in. And maybe other bits and bobs along the way, too. What else is there to say? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to. It'll be a cold day in hell. I don't care if you see me drop a little, a little. Okay, that's involuntary. Okay. Those of you who are familiar with my sinuses and my sensitivity, this is normal for me anyway. Okay. So just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be one of those people that has a breakdown and then post it. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. We're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is that we are going to say thank you for helping make this what it is for being part of this journey and that I got to be part of yours every day for four and a half years. And uh, you got to be part of mine. What I'm doing, I'm so happy. I'm happy YouTube stopped being an attentive employer or attentive lover. I'm happy because again, it put me in mind of where I needed to be. There's so much to look forward to. There's so much good work yet to do and to be done. And like I said, I go where I'm needed and this is where I'm needed. Um, but thank you all so much. And I will continue to see you just now, twice a week. So I thank you. My family thanks you. Um, I'm going to go, okay? And I'm going to go upstairs now, turn this off, and just ball a little bit. <laughs> just, just a little bit. I'm going to cry just a little bit in private. Thank you very much, you guys. I will see you at the check-ins. I will see you at your sign. And uh, be sure to tell me in the comments below what your last um, in-depth reading, what you would like it to be. Again, it's going to be majority... Majority wins on that one, so whoever, whatever the, the, the majority repost is or post is, um, that's what's going to happen. Okay, so make sure you put your comment down about what it is you would like to see. What else is there to say? Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you at your sign.